the Fantasy Six Pack Hour with your hosts, Joe Bob. Ah, you're awful. And AJ Applegar. It's Sin Shu Sin Shu Chu. It's a mouthful. All right, welcome back to the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. My name is Joe Bond, founder of FantasySixPack.net. With me, as always, AJ Abergarth. What's up, man? Not too much. Not too much. Just taking in some of this uh, divisional matchup game here and enjoying uh, enjoying life. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, man. It's good stuff. Uh, yeah, ten to seven right now, near the end of the first half. Uh, Brissett's got a rushing touchdown. D Hop's got a touchdown. We got a fair baron field goal so far. It's been all right. Uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the uh, the indie rushing game here soon. Uh, it's a topic everybody's been kind of wondering about. Um, but yeah. Uh, before we get into all that, let's say we drink some beer. I'm good with that. Mm, beer. All right, man. What you drinking tonight? Uh, tonight I dipped into the Lagunitas Maximus Maximus Ale IPA Maximus Ale. It is a uh, very delicious, brewed and bottled by none other than Lagunitas Brewing Company. Uh, Eight point two percent and uh, seventy two point four one IBUs. All right. So Maximus. Nice. It's uh, it's good, man. It's like uh, it's pretty easy drinking, um, but it's also fairly strong. And, yeah, it's and pretty heavy. I remember that. Pretty happy. Yeah. Uh, no, I've I've had that before. That's that's a good one. So mine is a dogfish. Uh, I thought it was something different. I thought I was getting ready to drink the seventy-five, but I grabbed something called sixty-one spelled out. Um. So the the description, a marriage of fruity complexity and pungent hoppiness. This is our continually hopped IPA brewed with Syrah, Syrah grape must. Um, not going to lie, man. It's not very good. <laughs> Dogfish, man, is super hit or miss. I mean, we've said that before. Um, I love some of their yeah. beers, and I just despise some of the others and this is one of the ones where i'm just like Ugh. so um you know we'll give him a shout out on on twitter when we when we post it but sorry dogfish you missed on this one uh it's definitely grapey you know it, i think it's kind of more like a it's almost like they're trying to get like wine people to drink an ipa it, it fails in my book and i'm not a wine drinker so maybe that's kind of what it is it's just kind of off man like there's just something about it where i'm like it's just missing something um yeah so, unfortunately, I only gave it like a two and three quarters on untapped. So, not not something I'm gonna seek out. But I will drink it for the show because I opened it. So there we go. All right, man. All right. Uh, so yeah, you wanna you wanna lead lead the uh, lead the show here tonight? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, looking at our news notes leading up to week 12 like we always do um first things first we got to mention our bye week teams praise sweet baby jesus this uh, is the last one. bye week it's also a brutal for one the dude. season it's still dude, these last few have really been killers from a fantasy standpoint mm-hmm. um 100%. this week we got the cardinals we got the chargers we got the chiefs and the Vikings. So three C's and a V. Yeah, Sounds dude. Like I mean, it's just this, this one's bad, dude. Like this one is just, whew. I mean, Cardinals, right? You get Murray and you know, DJ's not good anymore this year. It's just, I think he's, I think he's done for the year, man. Like he's just, it feels like he's yeah. just not going to get healthy enough, but you know, I mean, Christian Kirk Fitz has been decent. Like all those guys, chargers, obviously missing Mel Gordy, missing, uh, Keenan Allen, Eckler, all, you know, all those guys, right? Mike Williams, um, who saved my yeah, ass last week, by the way. 41 seconds left 
in the game <laughs> where uh, I had to sit Robert Woods and uh, yeah, randomly. Uh, <laughs> 51, 41 seconds left, man. He caught that 50-yard bomb and put me up by three. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that, that felt good. Um, you know, Chiefs, obviously, you know, just monsters all over the board with them, right? I mean, it's just – and then, yeah. you know, the Vikings, I mean, when – Diggs, we got Cook, we got, I mean, and, uh, you know, Captain Kirk is uh, is looking pretty decent so far, you know, recently. It's just, it's a lot, a lot of guys, man. And, like, you just, I mean, what do you do in this scenario, man, is my question. Like, I'm struggling to put together lineups this week. I'm playing some really craptastic people because we've got all the injuries on top of all of this, which there is a lot of them. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think the the big thing that we've been preaching all along is depth. You have to have good depth. And unfortunately, you know, you might have a lot of depth with these four teams, which would just be murderous. So which I did in a couple of leagues. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I know in, in the, the Fantasy Six Pack League, I'm just like struggling for wide receivers. And I have Hill out this week, which I think he's still potentially banged up with a, it was a hamstring. So yep. that that would have hurt me anyways this week. Um, but I'm like reduced to playing Zach Pascal because I I don't don't have anybody else. Which is um, I don't think going very well for you tonight. Horrific yeah. right now. So it's tough, know, man. I, I'm actually in a couple leagues where um, you know we we still have kickers. And of course, my kicker in those leagues is Harrison Bucker. Harrison Bucker is a yeah. hard drop, man. Uh, he's the top uh, kicker. I, he, you I know, I always say like, I always say you drop your kicker, right? But now you got Harrison Bucker, man. Like he's the guy, right? He's the one you can rely on yeah. week in week out. But uh, I'm I may have to make a tough cut in in one of my leagues um, because I've got Robert Woods and I have no backup receivers on that league. It's a five bench league, and one of my bench is taken up by Harrison Bucker, and then it's all running backs. And you know, I, I ideally wouldn't have had. Well, I have other receivers, but it's Mike Williams on bye, <laughs> so it's not very helpful. Yeah. Uh, so it's no. it's just brutal, I mean, man. Like I, I may have to just I may have to cut him. Thankfully, I picked up uh, the new Atlanta kicker. Um, Whatever the hell his name is, Young, Young Ku Ho, 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 or whatever. Like yep, that. yep, something like that. Uh, so I mean, that feel like that's a reasonable replacement, and I could just ride that the rest yeah. of the season. He's been good so far, but I mean, those are the types of se- that like he is the third kicker for Atlanta this season. They started out with Gino <laughs> Tacchiavelli or whatever his name is. Then they had Matt Bryant come back. Oh, right. I forgot him. about earlier in the year. They cut both of the other guys. And this was a team that we were like, go get the kicker. They play all of their games indoors right. except for two. And and the first two guys sucked. Yeah. Like, I drafted Giorgio in, like, every single league. And then two weeks in, he's cut. And I'm like, oh, great. All right. Well, they're bringing Matt Bryant back. Cool. And he's he was like terrible. I don't know if he's as bad as or slightly worse, I guess, because he got cut than Vinatieri. And it's like, all right, well, whatever. So, but yeah, I mean, that, the one thing that I'll say about it, and then we can move on from bye week talk, is, uh, I mean, you you do have to pay attention to it in your drafts. I know there's there's people that don't really care much about it, but when you're trying to set your team and looking at the guys that might potentially fall to you, you have to look at the draft or the, the bye weeks in the draft. And I slightly disagree with you. I slightly, I I slightly disagree, especially when you're looking at guys like week 12. I mean, let's be real. here. Let's be real here. You drafted a bunch of guys that are week 12 the likelihood of all of them staying on your team until week 12 are very slim. It doesn't happen in this case. They all did. Um, so yeah, it's just yeah, kind of a, a weird scenario. 
all of these guys that we're talking about, though, aren't droppable. I mean, you're well, not going to drop. But them you never like know if there's going to be you're other. Not, you, I mean, DJ maybe, but you never know if there's going to be injuries, and you can drop them. Yeah. You just there's so many things that can happen before week twelve that I, that I disagree with you. Now, if you're looking at a bunch of guys that are like week four, all right, may, maybe you like go pick up somebody else in the draft. But it, I really don't pay attention to bye weeks during my drafts. I'll figure it out, and I will in this league. This is really the only league where I'm, like, really strapped, um, and mainly because they don't have enough bench spots, and I'm going to get them to change that next year. Um, yeah. Although it is my work league, which I won't be a part of anymore. <laughs> but we'll, uh, we'll see. Um, my my yeah. other work league, not fancy six-pack work league. <laughs> so Yeah, I just think, I mean, obviously, if you want the player – then you're going to get go get them. But if you can get a similar talent and not totally hamstring yourself on, on a bye week, I'm not necessarily talking about week 12. I'm just talking like week seven was a really jumped up week. Um, and obviously the 16 bye week a couple weeks ago was horrendous. So it's just something that I try to pay attention to it and try to not have too many guys on the same buy. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I mean, agree that you might cut some of those guys at some point or trade them, um, or they might get injured. So they're sitting on an IR spot if they're coming back or dropped out outright. But yeah, I, I just don't, I don't think you can let the bye week dictate your draft, but it is something that you have to, be aware of in my mind yeah I mean, something to idea. be aware of yes you're, you're that last statement is 100 percent right don't let it dictate your draft but it, you do need to be aware of it if i really like the guy better i'm taking the guy like that's all there yeah. is to it i will figure it out in the end yeah exactly so so all right well let's move on uh, talked enough about bye weeks and thankfully they're over so so is this conversation um <laughs> Backfield reactions for week 11 um, or from week 11, basically into week 12. Right. So I, I'm actually going to skip the first one since that game's on right now and just jump into the no, second but, one. We have actually, let's, let's, no, we'll let's talk back. about that one first because because it's halftime. So it's perfect. So let's, okay. let's do that one first. All right. So Indy has lost Marlon Mack. For possibly at least the a couple year. of games, probably yeah, most likely possibly the year, yeah, the year. But if he's coming back, it's going to be late. Um, mm-hmm. So you have uh, Jonathan Williams, who stepped up and played pretty well last week, and then you still have uh, Wilkins there too. Now Wilkins has typically been the guy to back back up Mac this year. And I mean, overall, he's kind of been MIA most of the season, I feel like, but he was dealing with his own injury issues last week Mm -hmm. and kind of coming into tonight, we really didn't know what his role was going to be with Williams there. Now, Um, it was announced tonight that Williams was going to be the starter and get the majority of the work, it sounds like, but Wilkins has always kind of been more valuable in the passing game anyways. So what's your take on this situation? So my take before the game was I thought Wilkins was going to be the guy. I thought he was hurt last week. So obviously Jonathan Williams got all the carries once Mack went out and did phenomenal. Like, great job. Um, Over 100 yards rushing. You know, Naeem got Hines got his typical workload, bunch in the passing game, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, and then, yeah, you you called it like before the game this week. They announced Jonathan Williams was going to be the first guy out. Um, but then later on, you heard that you know there's still going to be a split backfield. Well, halftime of the game, let's just put it out there. Wilkins has not. I don't know if he hasn't been on the field. I don't see the snap counts in front of me, but he has no touches, not even a target. So you can scratch Wilkins off your list at this point. He's clearly not getting the work. I mean, and this is what India's done, right? Like 
He did it with Mack and Wilkins, right? Like Wilkins got yeah. basically nothing. It was all Mack and Hines. Um, you know, I don't know if we're going to see something different in the second half. You know, Will- Williams is doing not great. Uh, 13 for 33. Um, he's caught two passes. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to see here in the second half. So maybe we see some some Wilkins. I had to start him as Scott Fishbowl because I'm team is just obliterated right now at this point, uh, unfortunately. And it's, yeah. it's looking like your team. <laughs> um, but No, it's not it, looking that bad. No, it's not that bad. Sorry. <laughs> so... You know, I mean, it's it's just one of those things. Like we had to th- we had to guess, and I guessed wrong. Now I did have Williams ranked higher. Once I saw the news, I slid Williams up a little bit. But I had all these guys like mixed into the thirties, the thirties for my running back rankings. Like I didn't really love any of them because it was such a it was yeah. a crapshoot at this point. We don't know. Um, you know, had Williams not done what he did last week, I think everybody would have been all over Wilkins. And you know Wilkins and Hines, but Williams came in and, and really muddled the situation up, and that's exactly what we're seeing. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, it is. I, I think Himes has had his moments, but you know he is what he is. So, um, but we'll see how the rest of this game pans out. Maybe Wilkins will get a little more involved, or maybe he's still dealing with an injury, and that's why he's really not been yeah. used yet. I mean, he's active, uh, but you're right. I, I, I did think about that as well. Yeah. So, all right, we're moving on to the next situation here. We have um, our good friends, the Detroit Lions, yet again have <laughs> a roundabout merry-go-round of running backs. Uh, last week, it turns out that Bo Scarborough somehow managed to be the guy. Um Ty Johnson did end up getting concussed in that game. So that hurt a little bit. Um, But I I just think that this whole, this whole backfield situation has just been garbage all year long. So, you know, even when carry on was healthy, he still just didn't really put much together. And it it was a pass first offense. I mean, it has been for years. Um, so what are your thoughts on this situation as far as Scarborough versus, you know, Ty Johnson and, and McKissick? I mean, look, I would love to avoid the Detroit backfield. The reality is with the bye weeks, with all the injuries, people have to pay attention to this backfield. (laughs) Um, and it's not pretty, you're right. But the fact that Bo Scarborough went out and did what he did, uh, you know, 55 yards and a touchdown. Um, you're you're gonna pay attention to that. Um, it just, I don't know how repeatable it is. Now they do get the Redskins this week, so that helps. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, I flex play him this week. You know, I I think if 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 you kind of add options, that kind of thing, like he. God, he went for a hundred fab dollars in one of my leagues out of a hundred. I mean, end of the season, like doesn't really matter. It's a dynasty wow. league, so like nobody uses fab money in that league. So it's kind of like, ah, whatever. I'll take this guy. Um, I think yeah. at this point, I, he has to have jumped Ty Johnson, and McKissick's clearly the passing down back. Like that's all he's ever going to be. Um, yeah. So. I think both Scarborough, even if Ty Johnson's healthy, is has to get a second chance. I mean, he performed. <laughs> that's all there is to it. Yeah, did I mean, better than Ty Johnson ever did. So um, he's the first one that really has this year. I mean, Carryon's had a couple yeah. of decent games, but overall, you know, not much. And now he's just, in my mind, he's an injury risk. You know, two two straight years, two major injuries taking him out for the majority of the year. So. Hopefully he can shake it and and you know come back strong next year and really take command of this backfield because somebody needs to do it. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be. I was talking to um, I forget who I was talking to. Um, oh, Keenan, you know the DFS guy for he's a fantasy pack. I was talking with him and 
I told him I wouldn't be surprised if Kerry, if Detroit drafted a running back in like round three or four this year just to see what they could find. Yeah. Um, Carry on, probably going to get the chance next year to see, you know, to prove that he's a guy again. Um, but I really wouldn't doubt if they went out and got somebody. And if like a stud, because there's a bunch of studs coming out this year, if one of them fell to like the middle of the second, yeah, yeah, you take him if you're Detroit. You need that guy. Like, I, I know, I know Stafford's been, you know, that offense, and it's been pass heavy for so long. Um. But last year they clearly wanted to go away from that, and I still think they do. They just couldn't this year, so I think they're yeah. going to go back to it. They try to go back to it at least and, and get somebody, you know, somebody like a uh, Boston College guy, uh, like Dylan, what is his name? Dylan Brooks or something like that. Um, you know what I'm talking about? Um, yeah, yeah, I know which guy you're talking about. I, I just blanking his, his name right now, but yeah, it's it's something Dylan or Dylan something. But you know, if if somebody like that, you know, falls to the middle of the second round, like I, maybe you take a chance on him. Like I'm not up on all the like where these guys are being drafted. You know that that's ceiling for our site. You know, we'll get him on later and, and and talk. You know, near the end of the season about like you know big boards and things like that, and just kind of get draft prep ready. Um, but it he's a guy that I think should be up there. He's just a monster and and. And Detroit wants to pound the rock in that fashion, so why not take somebody like him if he were to fall in the draft? That's the type of guy I think Detroit will go after. Yeah, I mean, why why wouldn't you? Um, it's it's just makes sense to go out and see what you can get. Yep. Um, is it uh, no, 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 no. Dane? Is that no? He's a freshman. Nope. I'm looking at their roster. There's David Bailey, JV and Dane, AJ Dillon. AJ Dillon. I said Dillon something. Yeah. Or something Dillon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dillon. Yeah. That guy's a so, monster, dude. He kills tech every time he plays him. So. Oh. Yeah, I I don't want to talk about it. Hey, Virginia so, Tech's been good this year. After the Duke game. Hey. We've been we've been Hey, we're ranked. Yeah. Go home. Yeah. <laughs> Tough time. I know it's been uh, a while, so I'm cracking up in our another so, beer because that one sucked. I needed to make up for it, so I don't usually do that. All right, well, go, go double on here. Let's let's stick with the topic of running backs, but let's switch gears a little bit. And usually, I feel like we we do this section uh, a little bit later, but. With Thanksgiving being next week, and you know we're gonna we're gonna have a little bit more of a fun show on Wednesday night. Um, I I really wanted to just highlight this stuff now. Obviously, we already talked about how horrendous this bye week is. So if you're still fighting for a playoff spot, trying to follow this pattern right now, this week could be hard for you to do. But if you're locked in and you know you're headed to the playoffs. This is the section you want to pay attention to. Um, and that is our players to stash. So just, I mean, we've talked about some of these guys already throughout the year as far as good handcuffs to have for, from the running back standpoint. Um, but we just want to highlight them again here. Um, so I've got Madison with the Vikings. Uh, you've got Gus Edwards with Baltimore. Uh, you've got Armstead with Jacksonville. Um Benny Snell and and Trey Edmonds are, are kind of neck and neck, but I think now that Snell's healthy, he's actually going to have the upper hand um, over Edmonds. And we've obviously seen um, Connor continue to get injured week mm-hmm. after week and miss time. So I do think that, you know, obviously Jalen Samuels is the, the main guy there, but he's going to be owned in all – leagues at this point oh yeah Um, absolutely because because of connor so he's already owned but snell has a pretty low ownership i believe so yep he's someone i like and then last but not least the guy we have here listed is uh mostert for uh for san fran he's he's been pretty solid overall this year in general Mm -hmm. we know san fran likes to run the ball they've got 
really almost a four-headed monster between Coleman and Breda when he's healthy, Mostert and uh, Jeff, Jeff Wilson. Wilson. Yep. So any of those guys, I mean, again, Breda always injured. Coleman has missed some time this year. Uh, I mean, Mostert's even been a little banged up himself. So, you know, you kind of got to pick and choose. But to me, that's the the ranking, the hierarchy ranking um, that I'm looking at for these running backs to stash. So yeah. what do you think about these guys? What do you what do you like, dislike, or do you have any other guys that, that I'm – not listing here that I'm missing out no, on. No, I, I love I love the Madison pick, like especially if you're a cook owner. Like if you're a cook owner, you likely are headed to the playoffs, man. Like he was going in the second round. Um and so that that's just huge. So that that's a must pick up if you've if you've got Cook somewhere. Um I mean the rest of these guys, like I, I think the only ones that have standalone value is it's going to be Edwards yeah, because he's getting some work now as it is. The rest of these guys are straight up yeah. handcuffs. Um, you know, most of it doesn't yeah. get work unless Breed is out, which he is, um, but he's out himself, so <laughs> whatever. Uh, I, well, yeah, I mean, that's what I was saying. He's, I knew he was kind yeah, of Yeah, and it's hard to tell with Snell. Like, I'm not really sure what they're going to do, and, and – and, there's no telling how serious the injury is for Connor. Like, I mean, he could be back next week, right? Like, I think he's out this week, yeah. most likely, but uh, we just don't know. And so then it's kind of like, eh, I mean, Snell is then behind. You're talking about a handcuff or a handcuff at that point. So it's like, do you really want that? I don't know. Uh, he's kind of last well, on my yeah. list here. He, he is a little farther down. Uh, like I said, you still have Trey Edmonds there. Yeah, um, and he's likely to get some work, but he really hasn't done much with his opportunities. That's why I kind of like Snell's upside. Right, I think I, his ceiling is a little higher. Edmonds is um, getting a lot of work now that you know when when yeah. Connor's out. You know, an, a guy that is interesting, and I didn't realize that his ownership. I'm looking at it in Yahoo still. It's down at fifty three percent. Darius Geis, dude, like. You're talking somebody who could I like don't understand that. Like why? I mean I know he's kind of in a muddled backfield with a whole bunch of guys and Chris Thompson's likely coming back this week. But Yeah, but I mean, I think eventually they're just gonna hand this over to him. This team is done. They've gotta see what they got, right? I mean, they can't possibly really bring back AP next year. For a team that's going to be total garbage, and the dude's going to be what thirty-eight years old or whatever the hell he is, I know it's not true, but he's at least like thirty-five or something like that. He's old. Like I just don't. I know they're trying to protect him, but I think protect him, you know, for for a couple of weeks here. But Geis is the guy that fifty-three percent owned. If he's out there for some reason, you've got to find a way to get him on your roster. I mean, unless you're just totally stacked. You gotta find a way to get him on your roster. I did everywhere the day it was announced he was coming back. Snatched him up everywhere. There's no yeah, reason I not to. I mean, that's as soon as it was known. All right, he's definitely. I mean, even when he went out this the season early this season, it was always the plan to bring him back. Yep, absolutely. So I mean, a, a lot of my leagues, people just held him, stuck him in an IR spot. I, I, and waited did, I on did. Him. I did. I um, um so there's a league where I mean where we keep you can keep any player drafted after round five. So round five and on. Yeah. Um they have to be on your roster all year long. Geis was my round six pick. I kept him. I just squatted on him for the entire year. Yeah. I'm still hoping to keep him although i've got some decent options i've got like Corden sutton in around like 13 that might have to be it i don't know how the hell i got him around 13 yeah that's, that much. that's pretty solid. and then i got and then i got kyler murray in the last round so it's like i've got some options so yeah i mean getting a quarterback yeah, with your, i mean i getting the quarterback with the last round is pretty solid because then i can just pick everybody else ahead absolutely of so i don't know yeah, still no, it's guys, Geis is a money. That's a guy that I think I would go after. List. And and because he's really gonna, I I think he's just gonna take over. Yeah. Um, Adrian Peterson, by the way, thirty four years old. 
Yeah. Um, well, that's what I'm saying. So next year, I think he's 35. You know, it's interesting back. enough, yeah. both Scarborough is still only 38%. Next year, um, he will be 35. Right? So, I mean, he's a guy you can go and you potentially have a running back one. So yeah. there's some guys. So, there's definitely some guys out there. You just got to go look. All right. I mean, so let's – what's that? Yeah, just go look. You got to go look I mean, at this See point. who's they out go... there. See what the ownership is and then search all of your leagues. I know if he's got like a, a random 50 – ish percent even even if he's an 80 percent owned guy you never know he, he might be sitting there in your league People i've just seen, don't pay I've attention seen crazier things happen <laughs> yeah so all right we're well, moving on to uh wide receiver this isn't really handcuff because it's more or less depth that you're looking at yeah i mean obviously most teams have three starting wide receivers and you know at least two of them on every team should be somewhat fantasy relevant. Um, so you're really looking at just trying to build depth here and, and find some guys that are those two to three receivers, you know, or wide receiver two and three on that team that might have a good schedule coming up or, it, just something, anything that can help your team because you never know when an injury can happen to one of your starting guys. So speaking of injuries, the guy coming off of his injury this week, mm-hmm. or as far as I know, everything I've read is Sterling Shepard. Um, he's been dropped in a, in a couple of my it's leagues and a lot of places. I get it. Yeah. I mean, I get it. He was out and nobody knew what was going on. He's had a, ton of concussion issues so he was kind of a wild card but if he's sitting out there in your league you have to go put a claim in on this guy um or or just pick him up if he's just addable you know mm-hmm. so he's the first guy i really like a lot um oh, but sorry, again, i'm gonna, I'm gonna cut you off real quick uh we just had a jonathan williams touchdown uh yeah, you're behind. Yeah, we got to sync up I our games. I will see it in about 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, we got to sync up our games. I always forget. Uh, yeah. But, yes. Jonathan Williams touchdown. So, so, there you go. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so, Wilkins it is. All right. Everybody buy into <laughs> Wilkins. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. So, receivers. All right. Um, yeah, Sterling Shepard, good call. He's out there. Cobb. Yeah, your next one is Cobb. Yeah, Randall Cobb's been fucking balling out the past yeah. couple of weeks, and I don't know if it's just because of opportunity. If if uh, Cooper's just been not playing well, if he's been double teamed, I don't own Cooper in any leagues this year, so I really haven't been paying much attention to him. Plus, I hate the Cowboys, so. Um, it's, it, it does pain me a little bit to tell people to go pick up Randall Cobb, but Cooper's Cooper's turning okay into uh, his, his Cooper, Cooper, dude, uh, history is really what I'm, what I'm focusing on with my, my liking of Cobb. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's, he's been playing very well. Granted, he's got a very tough matchup against new England this week. Um, but Cooper does too. So Somebody on that team has to catch the ball. Well, the place uh, you, you can beat them Gallup is in the there. slot. If anywhere. What's that? The place you can beat them is in the slot, if anywhere. So, Exactly. Cobb's and the guy you actually where... want to go after, especially in like DFS, if you're just trying to get fancy. <laughs> yes, indeed. I mean, he's got, uh, he's got the ability. You know what you're getting with him. And, you know... Why not? Dak Dak's been amazing this year, but you know, just looking at his stats the past two weeks against a tough Minnesota team and a pretty weak Detroit team, uh, eight or six for one hundred six against Minnesota and a touchdown, four for one fifteen and a touchdown, and then eight and seven targets respectively between those two games. So. Obviously, the touchdowns definitely help, but he's getting over 100 yards too, so that's gonna that's gonna help you out. Um, 
definitely like Cobb. So the next guy we got listed here is uh, Gage from uh, Russell Gage from Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like him. Now, yeah, we were talking about him on Sunday, and he's he has the opportunity now with Sanu out of the picture. Um, I mean, obviously Julio and uh, Ridley are getting the lion's share of the targets, but and Hooper when he was healthy. But he's still banged up and out for a couple more weeks. They've got to throw the ball to some other people because their running game is a mess as it is, too. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's one we probably could have put on here and talked about, too. But Brian Hill summary basically disappointed everybody. So there we go. (laughs) Uh, Moving back to receivers. So, yeah, Gage, Gage is someone to look at. I mean, he hasn't done a whole lot yet. But, I mean, it, it's there. The talent's there. Um, I mean, he could be a really good play this week. And, you know, he's, he's starting to get more and more targets. I mean, hell, just back in week eight, he had nine targets. Um, caught seven for 58. So if he gets into the end zone, he's definitely going to have a little bit more value. But those those throws typically seem to go to those other two guys. Um, the next guy we got here is uh, Josh Reynolds for the Rams. Obviously he was a massive pickup. His ownership probably spiked to, uh, you know, everybody that owned Robert Woods's ownership um, on what Sunday night, I guess, or Sunday afternoon when it was deemed that Woods was going to be out that that hurt a lot of people so i can't buy into reynolds though man because cooks is probably returning this week and woods is back with the team and he may or may not play this week but reynolds is tough to trust you know at this point reynolds is probably last on my list of all these guys you've got listed yeah there's some other guys out here i'm looking at in yahoo that that i like a little bit you know as well i'll mention a couple of them when you're done yeah. The last guy that I have on my list here is Taylor Gabriel. Um, another guy that's just kind of been out there and, and is finally taking advantage of, uh, of his opportunities. Um, Alan Robinson's been pretty good all year long. Um, so you know what you're getting with him, but Anthony Miller has, has been a little up and down. He, he's been a little better of, as of late as well. But Gabriel, to me, is really the one that's kind of stepped up and and jumped in. Um, his last four games, he's got you know four for fifty three, three for sixty nine, four for thirty nine, and a touchdown. So that was really his value there. And then seven for fifty seven. But you mm-hmm. also got to look at the the quarterback situation here. Is oh, so bad. Pretty bad. It's so bad. Trubisky, <laughs> I think, has run run his course. I. I feel like they really should turn things over to to chase daniel but uh, you know whatever they may just let let trubisky continue to have his growing pains they invested a hell of a lot to get him so it's it's going to be hard for them well they're probably not going to make the playoffs this year anyway so it doesn't really matter but yeah no so i got a couple guys here that that i want to mention and and they're um i'm going to start with aj brown Tennessee. I know nobody loves his offense, but um, yeah, it. I I think it seems like the passing offense is way better under Tannehill than it was under Mariota. Uh, AJ Brown's been you know useful. Now last week was a bit of a dud, but you know 12, 12 points, nine points, twelve points in in full PPR um, last couple weeks or the three weeks prior. Um, another one here is Hunter Renfro. You know, we talked him up in the preseason yeah. when AB left the Raiders. It was like, oh my gosh, there needs to be somebody to take this on. It took half a season for it to finally pan out, but it it, it worked, man. You got, um, yeah, what is it? It's eighteen, seventeen, eight, and then eleven. Like he's just seeing targets, and that's what you're getting from him, and yeah. it's working. Um, there was a uh, uh, who did I? Stupid Yahoo. Um, 
There was somebody else on the next page, I believe, that I was kind of interested in, and now I can't find it. Um, well, <laughs> actually, now that I say that, I do remember who I was going to mention. So, interestingly enough, there is, like, random rumor mill again that Antonio Brown is, like, m- trying to make up with the Patriots, and now that Mohamed Sanu might be out for multiple uh-huh. weeks, they're actually apparently interested like do you take a flyer if you've got total garbage on the back of your bench do you take a flyer on antonio brown and if he comes back in the last couple weeks like we saw in the one week he played for the patriots how well he played it do you just take a flyer on him it like same thing with like aj green right like do you just take a flyer on him until you need that spot for something else i I mean you can if if i have the open spot to do it I think I do, and I, I, and I have. Know. I've done it with AJ Green. I have not done it with Brown, but I've done it with AJ Green. Now I may drop him because I think I'm going to need the spot in a week. But, um, well, wait, wait, wait. So who are you saying take a chance on Brown? E- either or one, either one. Oh, oh. I, I would be more inclined to do it with, um, with Green than Brown, obviously, but. I think Green has more of a yeah. chance to come back, although it's at this point in the season they're what, oh and ten. Uh maybe maybe yep. it's not gonna happen. Uh but it's uh it might they might be uh the next he's, the Owen sixteen team. Oh my goodness. It was that's pretty unbelievable. So yeah, man, those are a couple other guys that I like. Uh I mean, I'd say the favorite one from your list is clearly Shepard. He's a little bit higher owned. After that uh, yeah. I don't know. Cobb, Cobb is sort of up there. He's played well late, like you said. But to me, yeah, yeah I'm not really sure if that's sustainable for them. Uh, it's so, yeah. Those are a few other. Yeah, guys I mean, I like. Cobb, Cobb's kind of a tough choice because of Cooper being good this year for once, and <laughs> you know, Gallup's been really good too. So uh, he's. Cooper, um, Cooper's coming uh, back into form for me. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I mean, that's all I brought up for those two positions. Not really worth talking tight end because we just talked about how bad that position is last week. So, let's jump down to the defenses to stash. Um, mm. I mean, now is really the time for me that I'm looking at my teams that are that are going to the playoffs i and honestly i've really been looking at this all season long and and even into the draft just to try to gauge what teams are going to have a decent defense in you know throughout the year and who they play at the end of the year um it's easier to factor it in towards you know, as the season goes, because, you know, we obviously have surprise teams. Like, I don't know if anybody predicted Cincy to be 0-10 at this point. Um, no. <laughs> but you never know. So um, the defenses that I wrote down here are, as of earlier today when I wrote this, were less than 50% owned um, in, in Yahoo leagues. And we'll start off with the Oakland Raiders at 45% ownership. Now I basically broke it out by weeks 13, 14, 15, and 16. Um, basically some of the 13, you don't really have to worry about, but you can try to get them now and then play them if they have a decent enough mm-hmm. matchup. So Oakland, I don't recommend playing uh, in week 13 because they are at Kansas city. So going to Arrowhead is obviously a tough place to play. Um, And because of Kansas City, A, coming off a bye with Andy Reid, it is just never good for any opposing team. And then you've got everybody on Kansas City in general that's just very talented. So I don't love the Week 13, obviously. But then they see Tennessee, Jacksonville, and at Chargers – in the playoffs. Um, so all of those teams are kind of middle of the road, uh, according to the Yahoo uh, settings that I was looking at. So not, not 
super easy matchups, but good enough matchups that they can put some points up uh, against them. Tennessee and Jacksonville aren't super high scoring. Um, and we saw what the Chargers just did um, with Phillip Rivers throwing four interceptions, I believe it was. So, you know, they could uh, have a field day with him if he's even still the quarterback come week 16. Uh, next team I got listed here is my Philadelphia Eagles. They were only a 36% ownership, but their weeks 13, 14, and 15 could not really be much better. You got at Miami, then they come home for the Giants, then they come down here to our neck of the woods and play at Washington. I mean, that, that's three games that they should win pretty handily. And based on the game last week against the Patriots, the defense was the only damn sector of their team that showed up to play in that game. <laughs> offense mean, come was on, garbage. Though. Yeah, the offense Special stinks. teams was bleh. So, I, I mean, that, that was a game they could have won and yeah. possibly should have won. But Wentz just didn't have it. And, and I tweeted as such about that. Um, but then they come up uh, in week 16 against Dallas at home. That's pretty so rough. That one's, that one's pretty rough. Um, I love them in those other three games. So if you can get them now and ride them through those three games, hopefully you have another option or a good streamable uh, defense left for week 16 that can help you out, you know, in the championship game. So I got to ask you though. So like, here's a question for you, right? So week 14, right? If you've got the Patriots defense, they play Kansas city. You play in Philly over them. Uh, Right. That's tough. You know, I'm in that situation in a couple leagues. I've got the, the Patriots, Patriots defense, and week fourteen. If I'm not having a bye week, I have to use the Patriots versus the Chiefs, or pick up somebody like the Eagles. Man, uh, it's no, def- that's 14, tough. I'm dude. definitely using the Eagles. <sighs> yeah, that's 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 a tough call, man. Absolutely, they've been so good. I mean, I mean except for the game against the Baltimore, Patriots they've just been good. a cheat code with defense, man. They're so good. So they, I, it's rough, been, man. Uh, one of the best, if not the best, fantasy defense all season long, and uh, I mean, I just think it, it is tough to bench them, but. I, I did it last week in Fantasy Six Pack. I played the Jets over them because I liked the matchup better. And that was the league that I was specifically, you know, highlighting when I was talking about in the draft because everybody wanted to give me shit about drafting two defenses. Well, look at it now. I took the Jets and the Patriots back to back rounds, and they've been very damn good for me um, throughout the season so far. But I did it because I looked at their games, and when one of them had a bad matchup, the other one had a good matchup, wow. and, and kind of vice versa. So that was my my lone valuable premonition of this year. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, I mean but, it's tough, yeah, man. Like so... I think in the playoffs, like unless you've got one of these stud defenses, like yeah. last year in one league, I Chicago. I'm sorry, I just didn't sit Chicago. Like they were just that good, you know. Like there were a couple of defenses, like, and there's a couple of this year, like San Fran, New England. It's hard to sit these defenses, um, yeah. and so Baltimore's defense has been pretty good. And too, the, yeah, they were so. coming on strong. Pittsburgh's been coming on strong. So like, yeah. it, it's it's Pittsburgh tough to sit really those defenses. Nice but like, if up. you're rolling into the playoffs with like, I mean, yeah, Buffalo's good, but like point wise for fantasy. Eh, you know, if you're rolling into yeah. Buffalo and then like week 15, I'm just guessing here. Week 15, they play Pitt. Week 16, right? They play New England. Like uh, week 14, they play Baltimore. Like that hurts. I don't know if I'm playing the ball, the Buffalo defense. So this is when you I'm go not. get two or three defenses. You don't have to yeah. worry about every single week. 
to you know to pick up the next best defense. You've got them. There was one year in a D, in a in a league where I, I forget who the crappy team that was that year, but I went out and picked up all three defenses for week 14, 15, and sixteen that was playing that team. Won the league. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that's how you do it sometimes. Um, so yeah, stashing yeah. defenses is what I do more sometimes than like picking up my backup like running backs and things like that. I just I just pray that my running back and my receivers are going to stay healthy and I've got other bench spots that honestly I would probably play over top of those guys anyway even if I picked up this the handcuffs yeah. and I just stash defenses so that's another way yeah, to do it I mean it. that is that is a good thing to mention here is that yeah we talk about these handcuffs for running backs we talk about this wide receiver depth that we are trying to add you also have to think, am I going to start these guys? Um, yeah. Even you know, if that, my, that's even if the Cook... biggest thing, and if you're not going to start like an Armstead, uh, he's an absolute handcuff for Fournette owners. But other mm-hmm. than that, like, are you going to go pick him up if you don't own Fournette? Probably not. I mean, there, there's not really a point. Um, yeah. Like, I don't like know said, if Madison, there's Madison a lot of leagues Edwards where I don't think I would play Armstead too. over the over the other guys I have. You know, it it, yeah. it 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 it's hard. It would be hard to do. So yeah. Anyway, what's your last one here? And then we'll we'll get rock and roll. Yeah. Here. So the last the last defense I have for the four week breakdown is tonight's um, game or one of the teams in tonight's game, and that's Indy. Uh, they're only thirty one percent owned. They see Tennessee in week thirteen, who's not. You know, as I mentioned earlier, not not great, but not bad. Um, um, do, 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 do. You've got Tampa Bay in week thirteen or fourteen, which is a really nice opening, and then you've got at New Orleans week fifteen, which I do not like. But then they come home, and then they have Carolina, who's been very susceptible uh, to giving up defensive points. So that's a really good one. And then I just outlined a couple of teams here for each week individually. Uh, The first two weeks, 13 and 14, I really like the Jets. Again, they're only 27% owned, but they have at Cincinnati next week, and then they come home to play Miami. Beautiful. Then then their road ends for me, and that's when they will get dropped. Um, (laughs) Week 15's favorable matchup is Kansas City, 25% ownership against Denver. They put a hurting on Denver early this year. Um, so that game, again, will be at, at Arrowhead. So I, I love them that week. And then week 16, week 16 was kind of tough because you have four of the worst defenses for giving up points to their opposing teams, which the Jets are one of. You have the Jets playing... Um, I think it's uh, – da, 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 da. who was it? They I played Baltimore and then Pittsburgh right. in week 15-16. I'm sorry, not the Jets. Oh. It was Cincinnati and Miami play each other. And then Ooh. you have Washington and the Giants playing each other. So yeah. you could really pick any one of those four teams and possibly be okay. Uh, maybe not Cincinnati, but – Miami over Cincinnati, I kind of like, and the Giants whooped up on on Washington the first time defense wise. So I went ahead and picked Seattle over Arizona, who's kind of the one of those other middle of the road teams. So that's yeah. what I got for defenses. Just take a look, see what's out there in your leagues, and um, if you if you're locked in, like I said, go ahead and and try to start stashing. So what do we got for injuries here? Yeah. Let's rip through these because I definitely talked a lot for that. <laughs> it's all good, man. It's all it's all great shocker, information, shocker, man. Me talking, I don't um, understand that at all. Yeah, J- time to drink a beer and shut up. Uh, injuries, man. Uh, so so let's let's get to this. Let me make sure I switch our slide here. I'm bad at this. Um, Keith isn't here again for good reason. We'll, we'll let him share later. Uh, injuries, Mitch Trubisky. Uh, I've had this. We'll we'll do we'll do quotes here. The hip injury. Yeah, I don't really know. And um, 
He sure, <laughs> but he's practicing, so I think he's gonna play. Um, Matt Stafford probably not gonna play again. The back injury, uh, it's looking it's looking pretty pretty dim for him for his season. It's just it's a it's a blow to that entire offense, unfortunately. Running backs, we've got Devonta Freeman still likely out with a foot injury. So you know, one more week of Brian Hill, we'll see what happens. Um, Damian Williams injured last week, injured his ribs. Uh, it's it's unknown right now if he can return after the bye week. So you know, thankfully they do have the bye week for him. Uh, Jordan Howard has been practicing, so you know, it looks like he's going to be able to return here. James Conner, unlikely to play, re-aggravated his shoulder injury last week. So, as we kind of mentioned earlier, Jalen Samuels is the guy. Uh, and I kind of think he's the only one you really want to trust there. Uh, Deontay Johnson, shockingly, uh, after taking a pretty nasty hit and got concussed last week, he should be able to play this week. Um, so, that's that's good news for him. Oh, man, why did I put him in the running backs? I'm an idiot. Ignore me. Um, I also have him in the receiver area. I co- I think I copied it instead of cut it I, when I did it. Yeah. I don't even know what I did. All right, move it on here. Um, Redskins. We got Adrian Peterson. He uh, he hasn't been practicing this week, but he still could play. It sounds like. Uh, however, Chris Thompson practiced today for the first time in feels like forever. Uh, so, you know, I know. We both kind of like guys, but I mean, I wanted to ask you a quick, quick opinion on this. Like, if all three are healthy, like, man, who do you start if any at this point? Like, who do you like more? If all three are healthy. I still like guys the best. I mean, Thompson is okay. I mean, he's just he's a catching back though, and I know we talked about it last week that guys was initially going to be kind of pushed into that role more than a running role. Obviously, you know, with Thompson back, that that could He only got one catch, things. though. He just happened to go from 45 yards to a touchdown. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, I mean, we just didn't really see that whole passing back thing last week, but – I don't know. Maybe maybe they do want to just put him in more as a running back team uh, or running back. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. I have a feeling this will be. I have a feeling if all three are healthy, this will be a backfield we uh, we look at and do some reaction of next week. So yeah, uh, wide receivers for real this time. Let's do uh, D.D. Westbrook. He's been dealing with an illness. Status is pretty uncertain at this point, so who knows? Um, Tyreek Hill injured his hamstring. Uh, listed his day to day. Thankfully, they have a bye. Brandy Cooks said this earlier. He's expected to return after you know a concussion. They kept him out multiple games. Then Robert Woods. Uh, you know we all know what happened last week. Late scratch. Totally random. Uh, who knows really what happened here? They, they're just calling it a personal issue. Hope everything's good with the guy. Um, he did come back to the team this you know just today. Uh, but uh, they're not coming out and saying that he's like fully in the clear to play. So the worst news about this is they play Monday. So you've got to make a decision. You know, <laughs> it's just there's nothing, man. Like I'm stuck. I don't know what I'm gonna do in this league that I have him in and like a shallow bench, which sucks. Um, Muhammad Sanu dealing with an ankle injury, uh, could miss multiple games. Philip Dorsett is likely to play after suffering a concussion last week. We talked about Sterling Shepard coming back this week, so that's good news there. Alshon sounds like he's going to return from his ankle injury. I was got Deontay Johnson, who I already mentioned. <laughs> uh, we got Juju, who had a concussion and a knee. Uh, he hasn't practiced this week, so it sounds like he's out. Um, Debo Samuel has not... Um, you know, he did not take place in the contact portion of practice today. So it uh, sounds like he is on the wrong side of, of uh, questionable for this week. Uh, Emmanuel Sanders, who re-aggravated the rib injury. Uh, his status is unknown. And then Tyler Lockett. I mean, after, you know, the, the scare where he got, like, 
helicopter to the hospital, stayed overnight with like, swelling and all this stuff. They're just calling it a shin injury. And uh, he was limited in practice today. So I that shocked me after the way it sounded like he was going for him. And then um, Corey Davis, uh, hip injury. Sounds like he's on his way back to returning this week too. So we got a lot of guys returning this week, which is good. Uh, but they're, they're just not the top-notch players that we're going to be missing with bye weeks, unfortunately. Tight ends, uh, more interesting. Uh, we got Evan Ingram, Austin Hooper, both unlikely to play. Uh, Delaney Walker, sounds like he's going to be returning, which puts Jonah Smith back in the back burner. Uh, and then George Kittle, um, you're right. You, did you just change that? Is now probable. I did. Uh, I did. Where the yeah, hell did that come from? I was looking at my at one of my teams, and it showed him as probable. Uh, so I was literally me, looking just, at. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to look at. I'm, George Kittle. Wow, on track to play. The last thing I read, like right before, limited right, practice on Thursday. Interesting. And the last he, thing I read yeah, was like read... he wants to. He's optimistic he can play like that kind of talk. Um, yeah. So uh, I was like, well, I mean, nothing. I mean, he said that last week. So <laughs> that did that be huge, man? But uh, hey, that Dwelly guy, man, he played well last week, two touchdowns. So uh, yeah. But yeah, if Cuddle comes back in, clearly just plug him in, tight end one, no big deal. <laughs> he's good. Oh yeah. So absolutely. I mean, let's get our picks in here. He's pretty good. Um, finish this up got week 12 picks you want to go yeah so there was a couple of games i did like yours being one of them um but i i'll explain why i didn't go with that one one. later but i went with green bay at san fran i mean both of these teams have pretty solid defenses obviously san fran is a really good defense but green bay's defense has stepped up this year I think this could be a bit of a shootout um, and, you know, they want to go. So both teams headed for the playoffs at this point. It's a, it's a strong matchup this late in the season. Who you got? So mine is Bucks and Falcons. I know the Falcons defense has just been crazy good the last two weeks, but I don't buy it quite yet. Uh, me and me and Dave Eddy were talking about this on the Sunday show, the the Last Call podcast. I'm not ready to buy into it yet. I need to see it a little bit more. They were so bad for so long. It's just it's hard. It's hard to buy into it, right? So you know, we know we know both these teams can score. Uh, so I'm just looking for a pretty high scoring game here, both sides. Yeah, I, I think it it could very well happen. Um, I hope you don't get a six six interception game from Jameis. He had four yeah. last week. I will admit, two of them were not his fault, but he had four. Yeah. <laughs> it sucked. Still, OJ Howard was so, definitely one. <laughs> lowest lowest scoring. I got Detroit Washington. I mean, we've already touched on these teams a pretty good amount tonight. Um, you know, to me, Geis is really the only high point of this. Maybe Bo Scarborough gets another decent game, but I, other than that, I don't really like much about this with Driscoll still running the show for Detroit. Eh, hey, Marvin Jones scored twice last week, so you never know. Um, Broncos Bills is mine. I mean, both defenses are still good. I, at this point, you, know, you could argue the Bills are better at defense. And that's not that's not good news for the Broncos, whose offense is arguably worse as well. So yeah, you'll get solid points from Cortland Sutton. You'll get solid points from Philip Lindsay. You'll get okay points from Jared Allen. Like you'll get guys that are gonna be eh, all right, cool. They did what I wanted them to do, but this is gonna be a, a this is gonna be a low scoring game as far as NFL wise. You know, just points yeah. on the board. Um, fantasy, you know, you're going to get one or two guys that are, are reasonable, but I'm not looking for a lot of points all over the place. So, yeah. And, uh, Josh Allen, I believe is who you meant, not who, Jared Allen. Who the hell's Jared Allen? 
All right. Yes, Josh. Uh, you are he correct. used to be a defensive player, and I believe he's retired. Yes, you would. You would be correct. All right. Sleep, so, uh, all right. Sleepers busts. Quarterback. I'm. Uh, I'm gonna drink a little bit of your Kool Aid this week and go with uh, Mano Imano Sam Darnold. Uh, dude had a freaking monster game last week. Jets are coming into Oakland pretty hot. Um, I, I'm thinking that that we'll get more of the same. Hey, you know we called it the like earlier, right? We said if you need a playoff run, go look at the Jets. Go look at Sam Darnold. He's got a mess. He's got a phenomenal like week. What was it like week ten through fourteen? It was like yeah. he plays all the really crappy teams. Yep. So there you go. I, that's the one I wanted to say. You took it first. You know, whatever. I was slow to the draw this week. Um, so it happens. Um, so I'm going to go with your boy, man, Carson Wentz. It's been a, it's been a struggle this week, this year for him. Um, you know, some of it's his fault. Some's the O-line. Some's all the injuries they have at wide receiver and just piss poor play. Um, but, you know, I know people look at this game. They're going, "Oh, Seattle's defense, no way!" And then, dude, man, you look a little deeper at Seattle. They're just their defense is nothing like what it used to be, dude. Like they're actually, you can you can pass the ball against them. Uh, so yeah. I, I think Wentz could could surprise and kind of sneak into that top twelve. Uh, it's not going to be easy, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if it happens. Yeah, my my thought on that is that, I mean, after last week's debacle of play that he had, and, and I will say that it wasn't completely his fault. The O-line was banged up, so that definitely hurt him. But he had a lot of inaccurate throws as well. So Yeah, he, he's – well, I mean, uh, dude, when you're just under siege the entire time, you get happy yeah, feet, it's, you're just it's not hard. set. So, the mechanics aren't right. I mean, it's, it's, tough to, it's tough to play in those conditions, man. It really is. Yeah. So, all right, running back, I'm going with Geis here. Uh, as you mentioned, he scored on a late 45-yard screen pass. That was his first NFL touchdown, and it was his only reception of the game. But I also, think he's going to get the bulk first. of the work this week against sure. you know a very weak Detroit rush defense. And um, you know we already talked about AP possibly being out anyways. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he's he's primed for a pretty good week this week. Yeah, so mine's going to be an interesting pick. That, I mean, let's be honest. There's not a lot to love past like the top 15 running backs, top maybe 20, right? Like it's it's pretty rough. <laughs> yeah. Um so we we're we're you know reaching for whatever's out there. I'm taking a chance and I'm going Patrick Laird for the Miami Dolphins. Okay. Uh this guy, man. Um, I mean, look, Kalen Ballage is is the is the starter. <laughs> Have we seen how bad Kalen Ballage has been? By the way, uh, I think he's averaging below two yards to carry over the last couple of games. That's not good. Yeah, it's something something horrific. Like uh, that. He's averaging three point eight on the year, but over the last couple of games, I know for a fact last game it was. One yard per carry. <laughs> uh, and I think the game before that, I'm trying to go to his game log here real quick. The game before that wasn't much better. Um, but Patrick Laird, like he, he sat there and, and took, uh, oh yeah, 2.2, 2.7, 2.7, 2.3, 2.3. Like, it's not good, folks. Just stop believing Ballard is the guy. It's over. Um, Patrick Laird is... He may not get all the rushes. Like it doesn't seem like that's where they're using him. Although they might, because Ballard has been so bad. But um, you know, he he did catch six passes for fifty-one yards this past week. That's useful. That's pretty valuable. That's useful, guys. Yeah. Like especially in this week with all the bye weeks and all the injuries, and that's useful. So if you're just desperate, you're you got nothing. Why not? You know, you do much worse. I guarantee it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so my receiver bust. I'm um, sorry. Yeah, my receiver 
sleeper yep. is Taylor Gabriel. Uh, we already talked about him earlier as well. The Giants are absolutely horrible against opposing wide receivers. Uh, Gabriel's been very solid past few weeks, as already discussed. So I, I like him this week and think that he can uh, really put it together. Um, <laughs> it's funny. I think we both. Yeah, did, we, I think we, we both. We both think did we the did exact the thing. exact same thing. So we my did. sleeper awesome. is not the one that I listed there. I followed your followed your lead. Um, it's gonna be Danny Amendola. Uh, look, I I know I know it's just Driscoll. It, <laughs> nobody's excited about it. But I mean, Amendola is seeing a bunch of, you know, a bunch of targets still, um, and so it, this Washington secondary is just abysmal. Uh, it's so it, at the very least, like you're hoping for five, six catches for like sixty yards for Amendola. Twelve points in a PPR, man. You know that's 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 good. You know you're missing a we're missing a lot of firepower this week as as we've mentioned before. So I'm Amendola is a guy that that I kind of like. Yeah, I can get on board with that for sure. All right, well let's move on to busts here. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, Mr. Jared Allen um, for <laughs> for Buffalo. That's uh, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Josh Allen. Um, you already pretty much spelled it out. Denver's defense is still really good. This is going to be a low-scoring defensive battle of a game. So, I mean, Allen will still get some decent stats, but there's better options out there this week. Yeah, I, I uh, you know, I originally had Allen ranked inside the top ten, and yeah, you know, I relooked at some things and, and slid him just outside. So, I don't disagree with you there. Um, Allen's one of those guys that, you know, Dave and I have talked a few times on, on the show where it, he's got a, he's got a good floor, but his ceiling is limited, you know, unless he just, he's going to have those one or two weeks like last week where he just goes off, but they're, they're so unpredictable, but Allen's safe. Like I have no problem starting Allen this week because he's got the floor of, you know, him running. That's really all there is to it. Um, yeah. But my guy here is going right back to it. I think this is like a broken record at this point. Mr. Aaron Rodgers. Dude, he's just really just not getting it done this this year, dude. I, I, I don't know what else to tell people. Like, I, I started him, you know, I'm starting him in a dynasty league where, well, <laughs> I don't even... I probably will because my backup's Stam Darnold. Like, I just can't. I can't stomach starting Stam Darnold over Aaron Rodgers. Although I have done it once and it did work out for me. Um, but it's just another one of those. Like, it's just there really just isn't much happening in Green Bay in the passing game. They're focusing on the run, and God, where is? Where is he ranked even on here? Um, yeah, so his ranking in Yahoo, by the way, is 13. And that is, by the way, helped by a 31-point week, a 53-point week, and a 33-point week. You average the rest of his weeks out, I guarantee you he's like QB like 18 or 19. We're talking like 14, 13s, 10s. He's got a, he's got a nine. He got a niner in there, guys. Like, come on, <laughs> it's bad. It's really I'm bad. Sorry, are we talking on a walk? Talking <laughs> niner. Ah, uh, yes, we are. And he gets San Fran this week of all teams. No, don't do it. If yeah. you've got anything else out there, dude, go start Derek Carr over him. Just trust me. Do it. <laughs> no way. <laughs> San Fran is shut down. Have almost everybody, except for some reason, Kyler Murray. <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah, that that one was kind of off. But uh, Twice. another guy they <laughs> did shut down. Uh, my running back bust is Chris Carson. Uh, look, 
we get it. Seattle's coming out of the bye week, but Eagles rushing defense is still legit. You know, it's a tough challenge. Granted, it's a home game for Seattle, so that will help things because of the long travel for the Eagles. But again, they're the ones that that would have won them the game last week and, and really were the only ones to show up. So I think this could be an interesting game this week. Um, but I, I think that they're going to they're gonna shut Carson down. I mean, I get it. You, with all the bye week stuff, you're still starting him, but you got to have some reservations about doing it. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough blow. I, I mean, I'm definitely starting him, like you said. I, I can't sit. Oh, yeah. Like, the number, I don't, he's he's high up there in the ranks. I don't know what he is, but he's high up there, so no way. But, yeah, it it's not a great matchup. Now, a guy that I'm picking here is Tevin Coleman, and it is a good matchup, actually. Um, Green Bay's not that great at stopping the run, not since the beginning of the season. They've, they've been run on plenty. Um, now, that's thanks to like people like Melvin Gordon and Austin Eckler and Christian McCaffrey lately. Um, but Tevin Coleman, ever you know, since that three-touchdown game, he just really just kind of not done a lot. And they are also not just feeding him the ball. I mean, he's seeing 12, 9, 12 carries. And I know he catches some of that backfield, but I was watching the game last week against Arizona a little bit and the game against Seattle a little bit, and he just he doesn't look super explosive. Like, I, I expected more out of him. So I'm just I'm feeling a down game out of him again. Yeah, despite him should be getting most of the touches because they're just injured everywhere, but it just isn't happening. So, yeah, um, I, I agree with that. So last guy we have listed here um, before I get to my bust wide receiver, I do want to pat myself on the back about my sleeper wide receiver last week, Philip Dorsett. Um, my notes literally say Philly's pass defense is still very beatable, and I think this could be a Dorset in the red zone game. Well, Philip Dorset scored a touchdown. Boom. Went three for 33. <laughs> so there you go. There you go, man. I am awesome at picking one thing correctly throughout <laughs> every, every weeks like 10 weeks. It's cool. Every other five <laughs> weeks, yes. So, um, Back to this week, I'm going with Amari Cooper. Uh, look, we already talked about how good New England's defense is. Their DBs are some of the best in the league. And I really think they're just going to get up into Cooper's face and they're just going to stifle him all game long. So I, I do like Gallup a little bit better on the outside. And I, I do like Cobb, too. Yeah, so mine is Corton. Sutton. Um, I mean, look, he gets this Buffalo secondary, which is arguably one of the best in the league. Uh, it's, it's ninth. I actually thought it was better. It's ninth in DVOA and ninth according to Pro Football Focus. Um, but, you know, the, the quarterback the cornerback wide receiver matchup table by them kind of lists a negative matchup for him. Not by much, but a, a negative matchup. The problem is with Buffalo is it's a negative matchup across the board. I mean, like, that's the thing. Like they can move them around, but it's a tough, tough matchup everywhere. So I think they're going to lock Javius White on him, and and actually Pro Football Focus I think matches uh, agrees with that. But if that's the case, then like you you got to think that it's gonna it it it's gonna be bad news for for Sutton. And I mean, like I know Brandon Allen hasn't been terrible. But he's still not very good. Um, Sutton's performed with him and been okay. He's been useful, but I don't know. I'm just, I'm just not feeling. I, it was tough with all the bye weeks and all the injuries and stuff. It's tough to pick these like busts this week. Um, so I kind of reach for Sutton. I'm still starting him in one league because uh, I'm out of options. But it, I, I don't feel great about it. So what's your, uh, what's your defense, man? Let's finish this up. Uh, I got Atlanta. I know you talked to, talked them down earlier, but you know, they're twenty two percent owned. You know they've completely dominated. Their I, I get it, foe man. I get the past it. Two weeks, 
you know, being only the second team to put up double digit points against New Orleans. Um, they get a much easier task this week against Tampa Bay, who is prime for giving up defensive uh, points to their defensive opponents. Um, and this is their third straight of five, their third of five straight against their division. So this is just absurd. I don't know if I've ever seen this where the division opponents just face off back to back to back to back to back to back. They usually do. They've been doing it at the very end of the season lately, but I guess. Yeah. And and that's the Eagles really kind of have that too, where they're doing, you know, like I said, they've, they've got Washington uh, or I'm sorry, the giants, then Washington, then Dallas, then giants again in week 17. So, Mm -hmm. You know they're right there with it as well, but um, I, I do like Atlanta. I think I think they'll give up way more points than they did these past two weeks. Yeah. But the sacks uh, and the turnovers can be there, and that's huge. You, you're right, totally yeah. right on that. Um, which is where I go with mine. I'm going with Detroit, uh, going against the Washington Redskins. Uh, the Redskins for you know the. Uh, very few times this year scored in double digits. I think it's like half and half. <laughs> it's sad. Um, yeah. But I mean, still, even scoring 17 points, it was like late touchdowns. It was all like weird. I don't know. It was all, it just didn't feel like they should have scored that many points. Still gave up six sacks. Still got a pick. And that's what Haskins is going to do, man. He's going to turn the ball over. He's going to get sacked. The offensive line's bad. He doesn't. He's not aware enough, so he's gonna let up all these sacks, man. You know, it's Detroit's in a prime spot, man. I, I, I have him at the top ten defense this week. Yeah, so I, I can definitely get on board with that. So, all right, man. Uh, I did not switch our slide. I suck at this. I should, actually, I'm glad I didn't because I didn't. No, you know, I'm really glad I didn't because I didn't make a slide because. Keith isn't here, <laughs> uh, and he usually has all like the numbers with the defense slide. So I'm just gonna go to the fantasy six slide uh, and yeah. this. So we're good to go. That works. <laughs> we're good. <laughs> Close it out. All right, man. Uh, so as we close out, there's like three minutes left. Texans up twenty to seventeen. Been a good game so far, man. I've been I've been following it as best I can over here. Uh, the TV. Yeah. That's why I always look over to the left. If anybody ever wonders if they watch this, the TV's over to the left for me. So I try to watch yeah. as best I can to the game so I can pay attention. Hopkins got a second touchdown. Yeah. Um, Didn't see that. Yeah. So Brissett's got a yeah. chance here, though. Ooh. The, nope. 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 Not so much. All right. The majority of the time that my eyes were going. Oh whoop, yeah, yeah. You look up whoop. over your TV. You look over it's, your laptop. I'm looking right up over my laptop yep. at the TV in, yeah. in front of me. So yep. it's all good. It's, it's not, not that we don't love you guys, man, but we do got to watch the football. So exactly. <laughs> all right, we out. Good luck in week twelve. Peace. Multitask. <laughs>